Here's another show you can enjoy in the True Story FM family of entertainment podcasts. What's up, Supernatural superfans? I'm Chrissy Lenz. And I'm Nate McWhorter. And we're the hosts of Gang, Gang That, that Drink. Drink. A supernatural drinking game podcast. It's the podcast where we make up drinking game rules for a favorite episode of our favorite show, Supernatural. We recap the episode for you and let you know how all the rules played out. Then we let you know the drinking game rules for the next episode so you can play along. Plus, members get every episode early and ad free. With some extra bonus content chit chat at the end of each episode as a member exclusive. So download Gank That Drink, a supernatural drinking game podcast, wherever the finest podcasts are available. And or become a member at truestory.fm slash gank that drink. And when you're out there in the world saving people and hunting things, you know, the family business. Keep the gank that drink motto in mind. Be excellent to each other and party on. Party on, on dudes. dudes. Hey, movie lovers, I'm Pete Wright. And I'm Andy Nelson. We are the hosts of the Next Real Film Podcast. If you're passionate about films like we are, you'll love our show. Each week, we dive deep into a movie, discussing everything from the story and performances to the cinematography and score. Not to mention budgets and awards. We have covered iconic series like Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather Trilogy, examining themes of power, family, and the dark side of the American dream. We've explored the works of groundbreaking directors like Catherine Bigelow, discussing her mastery of tension. We've looked at heist films, great car chases, great years in film, couples on the run, and more. Our discussions go beyond the surface, examining what makes each film tick. We believe that when the movie ends, the conversation begins. And we'd love for you to join that conversation. Find the Next Reel Film Podcast on your favorite podcast app or at thenextreel.com. The Next Reel. When the movie ends, our conversation begins. Coming up on The Devil's Details, is this war in heaven canon? Paradise Lost, book six. Six? Six? Good morning, star lovelies, and welcome to another episode of The Devil's Details, a show where we dig up, decipher, dissect, and deconstruct the many forms of the devil. One of my names is Lester Ryan Clark. And I sometimes go by Keenan Diaz. And we're just two lost souls hitchhiking down the highway to hell. And just a reminder, today's episode was originally recorded as bonus content for our first podcast, The Exorcist Minute, so I think we should hand it over. Take it away, past Lester and Keenan. And today we are covering book six. Six? Six of John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost. Last time you'll remember, Eve relayed to Adam the world's first nightmare, where she encountered an angel who tempted her to eat the forbidden fruit. Adam assures her that no angel is coming to visit them. <laughs> see where Sorry. I'm going with this? Yes, I see where you're going. <laughs> Don't worry, baby. An angel can't come down here. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, up in heaven, God tells Raphael, one of the angels, <laughs> to go and visit Adam and Eve and educate them on the angel digestive system. No, no. <laughs> on free will and the dangers of sin and to warn them about Satan, who is now in their garden. Mm-hmm. So Raphael invites himself to dinner and uh, Eve is probably really suspicious of him since she just had a nightmare about an angel, but Milton doesn't do anything with that, so I guess not. (laughs) It's what the kids would call an L, Milton. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You had a terrific opportunity to give some cool character stuff to Eve and what did you talk about instead? What did you talk about instead, Milton? (laughs) Oh, we got to let uh, uh, Eve go out and pick fruits and make nut cream and also- Sure. Sure. Right? (laughs) <laughs> Bumped into George Decay. Oh my! <laughs> or is George is George Decay Raphael in this? Because we're casting this who thing. He now. said right. He has God's voice, but I think we gave him to Raphael. Yeah. Raphael. Okay. This part of the show is brought to you by the classic children's book Everyone Poops by Taro Gomi. Yeah, folks, are you having a Mandela moment too? You thought it was everybody poops, didn't you? Well, it's not. It just sounds better, doesn't it? it everybody it, poops. Everybody poops. It, it's got that rhythm. It's got that. You know. It's. I don't know what you would say. It's like chunkier. <laughs> Everybody poops, right? Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. It's not as creamy as the nut butter. No. Everyone poops. It's everyone, chunky. everyone that's a little smoother, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, I was thinking about that last week for some reason uh, when we were talking about something. Like, uh, we had, you know, in uh, Where the Wild Things Are and uh-huh. the, wild, the Wild Rumpus. 
Uh-huh, but, uh-huh. but Max declares, let the wild rumpus start, which what? is wrong. Yeah, it should be, of course. Let the wild, wild rumpus, rumpus begin. Begin, of yeah. course, right. But it's not Mandela effect. It's what? Start. This doesn't have the flow. That makes no sense. Huh. Yeah. Sorry, Marie Sunday. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> Sheesh. <All right. laughs> But yeah, uh, so so uh, this s- stirring dinner conversation um, <laughs> turns to the war in heaven, and we enter into a flashback. I put some music there. Oh yeah, I'm excited for flashback time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had, we've 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 missed the um you know the the, the Shakespeare trap. It's been so long, right? Because <laughs> we've been talking about like Dante and Milton, all those guys, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think the only fresh one we have is Limbo. <laughs> <laughs> One of our good friends, Kyle Sonjin, the director, I don't uh-huh. think doesn't doesn't like our limbo music. I think. <laughs> <laughs> because every time he, he you know he, he checks a couple days after the episode, he's like limbo again, huh? <laughs> 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 oh, Kyle, now I'm going to do it specifically for you. <laughs> yeah, that's for you, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> ah. But yeah, so so now we have a new one, right? We have a new contender. We have a flashback. Oh, flashback, flashback. <laughs> yeah. In which Raphael recalls how God announces the divinity of his only son, and Lucifer gathers all the angels under his command to plot rebellion. All but one. Book five ends with Abdiel, a seraphim, played by Sean Astin, renouncing Lucifer and turning his back on him. (laughs) And that is where we pick up today. So, as always, let's first read Milton's argument at the top of book six. Mm -hmm. All right. I actually did spell check on Milton here (laughs) so that I could read a little bit better. (laughs) Right. But I kept one word in his original spelling. Guess which one? (laughs) Listeners... Listen for it. Okay. Raphael continues to relate how Michael and Gabriel were sent forth to battle against Satan and his angels. The first fight described. Satan and his powers retire under night. He calls a council, invents devilish engines, which in the second day's fight put Michael and his angels to some disorder. But they, at length, pulling up mountains, overwhelmed both the force and machines of Satan. Yet, the tumult not so ending, God on the third day sends Messiah, his son, of whom he had reserved the glory of that victory. He, in the power of his father coming to the place and causing all his legions to stand still on either side, with his chariot and thunder driving into the midst of his enemies, pursues them, unable to resist, towards the wall of heaven, which, opening, they leap down with... Horror. 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 And confusion into the place of punishment prepared for them in the deep. Messiah returns with triumph to his father. Did you hear it at home, folks? Yeah, did you? Did you, did you? <laughs> ah. It's it. H O R R O U R. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Horror. Horror. <laughs> but actually, that no, um, the guys on uh, uh, Whose Line, uh, Whose mm-hmm. Line Is It Anyway, they bring up a very good point. You can't say that word and not have it sound exactly like whore. <laughs> right. Because like phonetically, E-R sounds the exact same as R. Right. So it's just like you're just like elongating the R, right? Right. Unless you're, you... You're a big whore fan. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge whore fan, right? <laughs> I watch horror movies. I, I read horror books. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? Huh. Just looking for a partner who also likes whore. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> But they do like on on whose line they're um they make it exaggerated. They turn to the camera. It's like, oh, I am filled with horror because <laughs> you have to do that. Otherwise, yeah. like you can't say it normally because then yeah. it sounds like the other word. Yeah. They're on ABC. It's a it's a Mickey Mouse network. So. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> horror. Horror. <laughs> or you know. If you're if you're if you're the the, the, the king of horror, right? mm-hmm. probably the locals in your in your state is like I wouldn't go up there if I were you. Stephen King <laughs> is is writing a new a horror book. Horror. He's that he's that horror writer. <laughs> he likes to write horror. But we don't trouble with all that down here. Nah, we got too many horrors to worry about. <laughs> You heard me. <laughs> it's like a pause. It's like, I, oh, 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 that's what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Okay. All right, all right. So, so, so that's what we got coming up. Not that stuff, but you know, the argument that I just read. Right. Right. Um, so let's get into the poem here. We start by following Abdiel, right? Still 
remember, played by Sean Astin, mm-hmm. um, through the night as he makes his way up back across the plane of heaven. Remember, folks, he had stood up to Lucifer even though he was all alone in that crowd of rebel angels and now he's returning, we assume, to warn God and all the other angels about Lucifer's plans, right? Right. It takes him uh, quite a long time, I imagine, right, to yeah. get from the north of heaven to wherever the Messiah or God and Messiah are. Okay, so, so Lucifer and his angels count for one third. Third, right. Do you see where I'm going with this? What, like, yeah. Because we have east, west, north, and south. How does mm-hmm. and where is God? <laughs> He's all around. I, I guess. <laughs> Obviously, He's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're going to see proof of that in a second, right? But he, uh, yeah. So it's it's some long trek, anyways, and mm-hmm. he he's got his potatoes. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Mash him, boil him. Stick, stick him in a stew. stew. <laughs> it's boil him, mash him, stick him in a stew. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um. Staving off the emails. No. Um, but yeah, yes. if we knew more about Sean Essen as Rudy, we would make Rudy jokes in the middle oh, yeah. email us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but Samwise jokes, people are like, I have been waiting for someone to mention <laughs> Samwise Gamgee in some form of media all week. <laughs> this is my opportunity. <laughs> and these two chuckleheads do not disappoint. <laughs> Five stars. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I need the Samwise Gamgee <laughs> mistakes. Yes. <laughs> to make myself feel like I'm connected to the Lord of the Rings in some way. Like I'm saving the Lord of the Rings. So yes, yes. I appreciate Lester and Keenan. Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> I, I can't carry this podcast for you, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Co-host. <laughs> but I can give you a five-star review. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. So so Milton says he walks all night and then he goes on to explain the mechanics of night and day in heaven even though no one asked. So uh, well I would ask. I, I, I would ask. Yeah. I like don't, uh, I don't why, understand. Why why night? Yeah. Why why does that exist? Yeah. I don't, I I honestly don't have a problem with this. <laughs> but okay, but okay, oh, to, to, okay. to to right, to well. to 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 um to satisfy your appetite, Keenan. Mm-hmm. Apparently, there is a cave in the mountain of God near his throne, and in that cave are two doors. Um, I'm envisioning like doggy doors. Um, behind behind which night and day are constantly like playing and orbiting inside the mountain. So I'm I'm thinking like two. What the hell is all this? <laughs> two, two, yeah, you wanted this. <laughs> They're playing like two little terriers, right? Uh huh. Sure. But when it's time, day comes out and spreads all over heaven. And then after, I don't know how many hours, mm-hmm. it, it goes back in through the little doggy door mm-hmm. and night comes out and it gets dark in heaven. Mm-hmm. So basically, God has the entirety of day and night in a little doghouse by his throne. Okay. I don't know why he doesn't just have it get lighter and darker at will. <laughs> or not even at will, right? He could just be the, you know, some of the metaphors about God or um, if you're like a deist, right? Where you're not thinking about like an active God, you think about God as a watchmaker, where, you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so God has set the watch in motion and doesn't have to, doesn't have to like remember to make it night. Right. It's it just, it just happens. Yeah. yeah. Like, 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 like space actually is yeah 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 <laughs> the way day and night actually no one has to like oh god i'm late i'm five minutes late for night i'm yeah. very very late mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> no it's already yeah. taken care of yep yeah keenan mm-hmm. is this the same day and night we experience on earth uh I, it, i'd be fine with that but no no, no. like i'm saying like mm-hmm. in in this story is this the mm-hmm. same day and night that adam and eve are experiencing it can't be oh like the like we're on like the 10th day now i suppose yeah. right Beca- but like no because the, be. the sun is not affecting it and like, we haven't like, made the sun until the, the first day. It, well, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the first thing. Yeah. Right. Let there be light. Let there be light. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and also, what about chaos? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like chaos, like we remember, he like he's the personification of chaos and he right. is married to the personification of night. Right. So this is a different night. So so chaos's wife doesn't live in the doggy door next to the throne of God. Right. I, I would hope not. <laughs> Okay, gotcha. Right. So, so we have three different types of night, <laughs> and two of them are personified. Right. Mm-hmm. Milton Milton knows Galileo. <laughs> Just to reiterate that <laughs> is what I'm saying. That's, or that's, at least he's gone and met him. Like, yeah. you know, like he's gotten gone, gone under house arrest. Yeah, he would have had his picture taken with him. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 Like when you go sure. down to Mar- Mar-a-Lago or Disneyland, and you, that is, you get that your picture taken. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, you get your picture taken with uh, Mickey Mouse. Um, doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that you endorse Mickey Mouse, <laughs> right, right? Right. But you have your picture. You're not buddies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My um my communist friend, 
uh, uh-huh. got uh, got uh, tripped on acid with with our buddies who um, love Disneyland. Like uh-huh. you know, I, I'd like to be a communist, but then how do I explain Disneyland? You know how mm-hmm. much I love Disneyland. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like Disneyland is like the best thing ever. It's the greatest uh-huh. thing. Cap- I, communism couldn't produce Disneyland. <laughs> you know, <laughs> capitalism has to produce Disneyland. Yeah, and yeah. so like our actual communist friend, like what they our buddies took him to Disneyland, uh-huh. and in the whole you know as he was going down there, he's like, oh, this is going to be terrible. This is going to be like the materialistic you know uh-huh. uh, hell hole. And they take him down there and they have him on acid, and, and he has the best time of his life. And they go to Toontown. And they uh, they meet Mickey, right? Mm-hmm. You go to Mickey's house and you wait in line, and then you get a picture taken with him. Uh-huh. And my friend is so is just so in awe that he gets to meet Mickey Mouse <laughs> and get his picture taken. But he's also high off his gourd, right? So yeah, he says, yeah. "Michael Mouse, you have a wonderful park here." <laughs> 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 which I, I like because it's like as if mickey mouse has the omnipotence of god that he knows that our friend has been talking shit about him the whole time down on the drive down to anaheim he's like i've got it you know what i've got to admit yeah <laughs> great <part. laughs> i i have been a fool <laughs> yeah, I, I have been a fool michael <laughs> I love that. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm glad he had fun. Yes, Um. yes. He's no longer communist, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) He's a shareholder now, probably. It's perfect. Perfect. (laughs) Another one under Mickey's belt. (laughs) Michael's belt, sorry. Yeah, he just has to convert them one at a time like that. Yep, yep. (laughs) Now. I, oh, I, okay. Yeah, folks, uh, like the, the, the reason <laughs> that we had to describe all of that stuff, and not the, not the Mickey stuff, that was just for, <laughs> for fun, but like the, re- okay, like the reason we talked about like the day and night doggy doors. Right, uh-huh, right. Is, it, it, is so we can have this next scene where Abdiel has been walking all night mm-hmm. and dawn comes and he sees that all the good angels are already lined up for battle. Mm-hmm. So Don comes, who is just like a, a lady who lives down the street. I guess sure. he's like, "Hey, Don! Oh, hey there, Abdiel! Yeah, day's coming." <laughs> yeah, and they look over, and, and, and it's Jim Day. day. <laughs> All right, see you later, Don. Everything <laughs> is like something, or it is something, <laughs> or it's a personification of something. <laughs> but no, like what I'm what I'm saying is like Milton couldn't just say. And then Dawn came and Abdiel right. saw God's army. He he was trying to like stave off those emails that you were going to ask him. How how does heaven have day and night? How mm-hmm. how does the force work? <laughs> oh, we have to have an explanation, guys. It's heaven. <laughs> That's the place where the guy who said, let there be light lives. <laughs> I don't know how much simpler it can be, yeah. Milton. And it was so, and it was good. Yeah. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> It wasn't good enough for Milton. <laughs> like, like we actually, you know, if anyone writes to us and, and tells, like, people um, people write in and, uh, com- or not complain, but they, they yeah. write and say, hey, I was thinking about this or, or I think this or whatever. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not the kind of guy who goes and emails Milton. I, I'm the kind of guy who doesn't email Milton and just bitches about him. <laughs> On know? a podcast. Yeah, 450 years after he died. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, please email us with anything. That's wonderful. Yes, we absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to we're gonna get a one star from Beyond the Grave. <laughs> It's John Milton's daughter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Reviewing yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so so all this, so we can get that epic shot of Abdiel, you know, topping the hill just as day breaks, and he sees all the angels in mm-hmm. resplendent armor, and they're ready to fight. So yeah, so so mm-hmm. God already knew they're 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 already ready already, right? Right. Um, and and the angels are so happy to see Abdiel. They they rejoice and they rush up and they clap him on the back. Uh, you know, like like they're not angry at all, right? Mm-hmm. No one's calling him a traitor, and it's probably because you know God had his like face off with Satan playing on the big screen for for everyone to see, right? Right. Um, so yeah, so so and everybody bring... over for like a Super Bowl party, but the Super right? Bowl party is uh, Abdiel telling off Satan. Uh, exactly on. right. Mm-hmm. He's one of these angels. It's like these commercials just get weirder and weirder. <laughs> right, a couple of them are there just for the commercials. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but they let everybody know that. Like I don't follow this Abdiel Satan thing, but yeah, yeah. I'm just here for the commercials. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> oh, there's there's we a shot of night and day playing in the doghouse. It's great. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so they bring him to the throne of God, who is at least right now, 
a golden cloud. Or or he's inside the golden cloud. I don't know. Um, I don't know why, but like when God appears in book three, I imagined him as like the, the humanized version of God, you know, like like how uh, Michelangelo painted him. Oh, yeah. How about you? Um, well, here in this book, it says, yeah, a voice from midst a golden cloud. Right. So, yeah, is that, that God is the cloud or God is... In Inside the cloud, the cloud? Yeah. God is like a cloud. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is he as a cloud? Is he yeah. like a cloud, Milton? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's a dream. But no, no, actually, that's it. Um, in book three, I think because of the weird meta questions of um, God talking to the sun, right, uh-huh. that I, I did not see either of them as having bodies when I was reading it. Because <gasps> really? Like this, yeah, because it was like, okay, we're going to incarnate the sun into, a, you know, make a meat. We're going to make uh, yeah. him into, into meat and turn him into Jesus later. So, right. yeah, I didn't see them as having any corporeal form. Oh. Oh, so it's like the um, it's like that opening of the planetarium. <laughs> am I am I misremembering? It's like it's like two voices talking, and it's like yeah. one's a child and one's a mother. Well, it depends on which planetarium you're going to, but sure. Oh, okay, all right. Did I did I just pull that out of like my ass? Like I no, like, I know, I, I know that name of the kind of thing you're talking about. Yeah, you know what I'm sure. talking? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's like you just hear it's like mother. <laughs> What is space? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, space is blah blah blah, you know. And and it's like a mother and a son talking about mm-hmm. creation or something. So. So that's what you see. Like, so in book three, it's like you see all of like heaven and the cosmos laid out and you just hear it kind of like two Yeah, voices. yeah, because because we know that the sun doesn't have a form yet. Right. Yeah, or, or does he? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> He's like a body. Yeah. <laughs> he is like meat. Yeah. Um, but uh, and just in case, if you're skipping around in these, yeah, so. I'm saying Jesus is like meat because that's what that's what they say is incarnate. That's incarnate. what incarnate means. Right, right. Just, just, so now when you have a carne asada, you know, <laughs> don't write to me about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I guess like at the beginning of It's a Wonderful Life, where God is talking to the angels and the angels don't right. have any uh, form. They they even cheat a little bit and they have like every time someone talks, one of the stars blinks. You know, right? Yeah, okay. but I, I I don't know. I think yeah, in the quote reality of this, right? Yeah. God doesn't have a body, doesn't have a form, and so even a star wouldn't need to blink. They don't need to like have any sort of visual um signifier ah. that, like a like a puppet opening its mouth right 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 right, right, right. he's oh. god he could do what he want he made light. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> right and then he made like several different kinds of, of light yeah he separated the heavens from the earth what he uh-huh. want from him yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or okay like like how um william blake paints him um oh yeah, F- uh, folks, we have been going on and on about the the Paradise Lost illustrations by Gustave Doré, and mm-hmm. rightly so. They they are amazing. Um, he also famously did the uh, the illustrations for Dante's comedy. Um, but we have not talked yet about William Blake's uh, paintings for Paradise Lost. Um, they're the other illustrations that you see. It's it's either Doré or Blake. Um, they're the two most famous ones. Um, and he depicts God with human features. Um, I'm personally, I'm more a fan of the, uh, of the, uh, the Dore illustrations um, though, because uh, they're a little darker. They're a little starker. Well, yeah, they're black and white Lester, um, <laughs> but, but they're like, they're also less stylized. And I really like Dore's per, uh, um, depiction of Satan. Um, specifically, there's uh, uh, an illustration. I actually sent it to, to Keenan yesterday mm-hmm. of Satan by Gustav Dore. And he's uh, for Paradise Lost. And he's like, he's already in Eden. He's like sitting on a rock and he's got his elbow on another rock and he's got his chin in his hands and his face, depending on the resolution of the picture you're looking mm-hmm. at, changes. I, I first saw it in a book about the history of the devil back in like elementary school. This was in like the nonfiction section. I don't know how they they let it in there. But, um, you know, like they had stuff about like, oh, here's a book about vampires and here's a book about witches and here's a book about ghosts and werewolves. And, and oh, you know, on this same shelf is a, is a book about the history of the devil, right? <laughs> yeah, at that time I was reading books on dinosaurs, I guess, like a, <laughs> like a total normie. <laughs> but yeah, so I was, I was picking up uh, this devil book and this book had this illustration from Paradise Lost. Mm-hmm. But the picture was like such a cheap photocopy so that all you saw was like this angel with like bat wings and black holes Mm -hmm. for eyes and this like huge joker smile and then later like i saw the original print and it's really detailed actually and you look closer and you see that oh oh like like dore drew the pupils for satan like satan Mm -hmm. has pupils he's he's looking at something what's he looking at and you zoom in and you zoom in and he's looking at you And he was looking at you in elementary school. You just couldn't see his, his eyes. Right. He was looking he at you the was whole still time. Looking at you, yeah, the whole time. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 
Blake. Yeah, I, I haven't looked at Blake's actually. So I'm on the yeah. the William uh, Wikipedia. William Blake's illustrations of Paradise Lost. And these are very yeah. interesting. They are very very interesting. I his 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 depiction of Satan is mm-hmm. interesting. I it, it looks too much like Harpo Marx for me. <laughs> Uh, do, you see, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, he's curly. He's got curly hair. He looks very young. This yeah, thing. very very young. He's got he's got curly blonde hair, mm-hmm. and and he's got like a face like Harpo is just like kind of like wide eyed like you know. <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, I'm not trying to criticize Harpo Marx's acting because it's completely mm. appropriate for what he's doing. But hey, yeah, yeah if, if you did those faces in your acting class, your teacher would be like, you're tr- you're pushing, you're trying too hard. Like yeah. you're you're trying to show us every single because mm-hmm. he, he's a mime, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, so this looks a little bit, yeah, like Satan is trying to be sure that we get what he's feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, that's going to ruin things. That's Harpo Marx. (laughs) Sorry. Did I ruin Emily Dickinson for you yet? (laughs) Uh, No, haven't I? No. All right, here we go. Do you like like Emily Dickinson? Sure. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) At this moment, yeah. (laughs) So my teacher, my Uh my English teacher in 12th grade ruined... um, um, ruined Emily Dickinson for me. If it's if it's not the one I'm thinking of, mm-hmm. I have another thing to ruin Emily Dickinson. <laughs> yeah, all right. So my 12th grade literature, literature teacher mm-hmm. pointed out that because Emily Dickinson uses the same meter in yes. all of her poems. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Go on. So, so here's, I think, her most famous one. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. Uh-huh. The carriage held but just ourselves in immortality. But because she always writes in the same meter, you could you could uh, read this as the Yellow Rose of Texas, right? Um, oh. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves in immortality. Oh, no, no. And you oh, could yeah, read yeah. it as okay, the theme there, song. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> From Gilligan's Island. No, what? Oh, oh, maybe you have another, maybe you have another <laughs> one. Okay. Oh, wait, now how does Gilligan's Island do this? Uh-huh. Um, Sit right back, we'll tell a tale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage <laughs> held but just ourselves and immortality. And, and immortality. immortality. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how are, how are you going to ruin Emily Dickinson? I That's mean, two for me. Keenan, Keenan, <laughs> mm-hmm. don't you remember a time when, when you wanted to be the very best? <laughs> like no one ever was <laughs> to catch them was your real quest right think mm-hmm. about it it's like because i could not stop for death <laughs> he kindly stopped for me da, 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 da. the carriage held just ourselves <laughs> and immortality okay mom <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah so, you can do that for every single stanza of, wow. uh, of Emily Dickinson. Yeah. All right, so you've ruined William Blake's illustrations for me. I, <laughs> right. I was digging them, but now now they're Harpo Marxy. Yep, yep. And, and I mean, we, we just finished recording mm-hmm. um, an episode of, of our regular show, Exorcist mm-hmm. Minute, where I, I ruined uh, a scene. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, for we, Keenan. We, so, we noticed, you know. yeah, things that we're not supposed to notice, and we, yeah, we yeah. have all these, yeah. Not necessarily even continuity mistakes, but just, you know, things that don't jive because they're trying to put the picture together and it's a complicated yeah. medium. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So thanks, everybody. Yeah. So what I'm saying, Keenan, is, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like Satan, I cannot create anything <laughs> original, but I can only corrupt. <laughs> it's yeah. a gift. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But this Wikipedia article for William Blake's illustrations of yeah. Paradise Lost says that because he was making these for patrons, like I guess, you know, rich patrons who oh. um, who liked Paradise Lost and were uh-huh. asking him that sometime there's like there are two or three depictions of the same picture and it looks like oh. Blake would be working from the same um you know the same uh like sketch. model yeah what's the yeah there's a name for that sorry I can't think of it in in art where you you might draw something first before you paint it and then you keep the, a study oh yeah okay. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so you might be working from the same study so some of them are um you know now that we have these two collections uh and can put them in museums and stuff we could see like the, the slight variations in them oh that's really cool yeah that's really cool and so one of the sets they're all named after his patrons so uh-huh one is the Thomas set, named uh-huh. after Reverend Joseph Thomas. So there's the Thomas mm-hmm. set of the illustrations. Okay. The, mm-hmm. the Linnell set, named mm-hmm. after John Linnell. Uh-huh. And the Butts set, named after <laughs> Thomas Butts. <laughs> so Are the you Butts serious? The Butts set is the most complete set of all of William Blake's illustrations. I should hope. What, what Lester? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's also the most colorful, at least the, the color uh-huh. in the butt set had, has lasted the longest. <laughs> Stop. Lester, what? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs>
I cannot believe that. That is that is ridiculous. <laughs> hey man, I didn't name him Thomas Butts. No, his parents no. did. <laughs> no, <laughs> they didn't choose their own last name. Well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Well, if they did, that's even more alarming. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, okay, all of this, guys. Anyway, like we're, we're trying to say um, that. Um, what are we trying to say? Yes. <laughs> we're trying to say that William Blake depicts God like like the traditional kind of like human form of God, like right. like you would see in like, you know, um, the birth of man or mm-hmm. you know, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, in, you know, Michelangelo's thing. Um, right. But here, I guess, um, God speaks to Abdiel from within this golden cloud, yes. um, he he welcomes him back, um, commends him for his bravery in you know standing up to Satan, and then orders Michael and Gabriel to lead the army into battle. And after he's done speaking, the cloud becomes like dark and thunderous, and then all of heaven's atmosphere sort of like matches it because mm-hmm. God has his own soundtrack, and now he's playing like the war song. You know, <laughs> what's the war song for you on your soundtrack? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Oh shit! You put me on the spot here. Yay! Oh, uh, it's Nightwish. It's a. Uh, I wish I had an angel. <laughs> yeah, I like. Well, I guess. Oh, that that makes sense. I guess my version of that kind of epic battle song would be um, mm-hmm. uh, immigrant song. I suppose. Which, uh, oh. yeah, which which I, which I think is great. Like, you know, I, I can't do that scream like that. Oh yeah. That's as good as I can get it. But. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, 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 folks, just imagine, right? You know, you got this big cloud <laughs> on a throne. Yeah, the two... cloud. Yeah, the cloud reigns. He's he's the he's the throne. Uh, he's the cloud, cloud reigns. Did yes, you get that? Yes. 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 He's sitting on the throne. <laughs> sitting on the throne with two gigantic speakers on either side, <laughs> and you got these angels pulling, you know, mm-hmm. his his uh, his chariot, and you just hear. Um, <laughs> well, let's have you do it again, Keenan. Okay. Okay. I might have a voice afterwards, but all right. Ah! Love it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> you come from a land of the ice and storm. Of the zip mm-hmm. and up, 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 right. And that's the angels they're singing along. <laughs> it's it's the verses like, I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> it's perfect, mm-hmm. perfect. Right. Yeah. What are the other guys singing? Like, like they got to be, they got to be singing something like, you know, um, Fight the impossible fight. You know, <laughs> that's what you would want before you were killed. You, you were immortal, but now you're gonna get killed, and you're singing. I don't. I the don't impossible know. Impossible dream. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just saying it's it's got to be like a juxtaposition, right? Because like you know the you know heaven side is all like you know it's like it's like badass and metal. And, right, you know, right, right. You know. I don't know. They're 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 just kind of like you know strutting along to smooth jazz. Or, <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's a midnight serenade. Like, na 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 na. Well, it's like no, no, like, like they're so cocky. It's it's we are the champions. <laughs> oh yeah, before, before they even get before there. they yeah. even get there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, okay, okay, yeah. So um, so so they're marching the mm. length of this battlefield, and soon they see off in the distance Lucifer's army. Mm. And Raphael recalls how it seems strange at first that Angel should fight with Angel. Mm-hmm. It had never happened before. But then you know the battle cries of his fellow angels, and uh, and that sweet soundtrack kicks in. <laughs> you do it one more time, Keenan. <laughs> Yeah, so 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 Raphael hears all of this, right? And he becomes a mean green fighting machine. <laughs> he doesn't say Kawabunga because he's not that one. Right? <laughs> nah. But no, so 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 pretty soon they catch sight of Lucifer. He is in his sun chariot, raised up like a god. He's got like a god. Like, like a god. <laughs> a god, not the right, god. Not the right? god. Um, he's got golden cherubim uh, encircling him, the whole works, right? And he leaps down from his chariot and lands like an anime character. <laughs> and that's when, like, the two armies stop marching and they face each other. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, like, a little distance apart. And, you know, Satan starts striding forward with, quote, haughty strides. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is just, like, like you said, Keenan, cock of the walk, like, for Father Dyer in oh, that one yeah. episode, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Satan's strutting, like, you know, cock of the cosmos. Um <laughs> And he's strutting around, tall and erect, by the way. Um, <laughs> and Abdiel's in the front, and he's like, this fucking guy. So he steps <laughs> Coming forward. Coming in here erect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy. 
you know, so he steps forward and he meets Satan in the mm-hmm. middle, right? And he says, as Sean Astin, remember, right. right? He's like, so much for the element of surprise. You know God can just squish you with one of his fingers, but I'm glad he hasn't yet because now I get to personally kick your ass. Mm-hmm. And Satan's like, oh, this is perfect. Mm-hmm. I was hoping I'd find you so I could kill you first for betraying me. Mm-hmm. And then he, you know, does that classic villain thing where he projects himself onto Abdiel. He's like, I know what you're trying to do. You're you're challenging me in front of everyone to, to make a name for yourself. Everyone's going to remember little Abdiel stood up against big, bad Lucifer. And he's like, man, being an angel used to mean something. <laughs> but look at this army. You're you're trained in food and song, not war. You're the, you're the singing servants of heaven. And Satan's getting all worked up, like whether whether he like actually believes what he's saying or not, right? At least right now in this moment, like he's offended by Abdiel and the other angels, like uh, their blind loyalty and their servility. Mm-hmm. And this right here is the perfect Sean Astin moment because because he counters this, he counters anger with pity. He's like, you still don't get it, do you? You guys are the ones in chains because you're slaves to yourself, most of all you. And he's like, go ahead and reign in hell if that's what you want. I'll take my servitude in heaven. And we cut to a wide shot, the angels of both armies standing there completely silent. Cut to God's army and you see some some tears in the crowd. Maybe there's maybe there's like a, a gruff sergeant who was like, he was like tough on Abdiel back when, when he was in basic training. And you see him crack a smile. He's like, good job, kid, right? And then we cut to Satan's army and like in the middle of everyone, Captain Howdy starts doing a slow... <laughs> clap but then he looks around and he's like oh oh oh, oh. <laughs> Some, somehow he's in the front um he's not he's not supposed to be there he's right. he like like he's, he's supposed to be like a private or a corporal but but he decided that he's the drummer right. um and he killed the drummer and he took his place but he keeps like improvising going off on these little jazz flourishes and it really messed up the pace of satan's army getting there that's that's why god had time to prepare <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, listen to this. Listen to this. <laughs> so, uh, where is yeah. uh, Rudy in all this? Or I mean, uh, Abdiel. <laughs> Abdiel? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. They're still in the middle. They're still, they're still squaring off, right? He said yeah. his big speech. Yeah, he did his, he did his big speech, right? <laughs> um, so, so we're back with them. We're back with Abdiel and Satan. Mm-hmm. And so, so Abdiel makes that speech. You know, not a, not a dry eye on the battlefield. <laughs> and Satan, and Satan's like anything else and abdiel's like just one more thing and he draws back and before anyone knows what's happening he punches satan in the face so hard that satan is hurled back 10 paces Mm -hmm. and does like the classic anime backslide and his heels are digging trenches in the dirt and like his knees buckle and he has to hold himself up with his spear, and we get a close up on Satan. You know, there's just a thin trickle of blood running down the corner <laughs> of his mouth, and he's like, he's like, Dude, impossible. He's so strong. Then he wipes the blood off, and he tastes it, and he's like, <laughs> no, 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 he doesn't. no. So Abdiel, who is like uh-huh. the, I don't know. 10th most important character in this right. thing <laughs> just to remind everybody yeah 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 the the, the book the poem goes off on this yeah i, I like abdul obviously uh-huh but mm-hmm. yeah he has the hero moment and, and uh-huh. does this and then uh we'll see what you know what yeah what happens to abdul after this uh-huh yeah but he he he, he boops satan's snoot <laughs> Right, he's Rudy, Rudy, yeah. Rudy. That, that's exactly that's what the angels are doing. Yeah. And then there's like Rudy. Oh, I, uh. but yeah. So, so Abiel draws first blood, and for a moment, everyone is in shock. Like right. especially Satan's army, they cannot believe that their boss just got clobbered. And and by this, not the, by not by, the main character, or anything. right. <laughs> By this guy over they here. You might understand if it was God or the right. Son or Raphael or uh-huh. Michael or Uriel. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But this guy. But but what's the L? Like like they're, 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 they don't even know. Like, like who is this? Is it Abidel? Abidel? Zebediel? Is that Zebediel? <laughs> There's no right. one named Zebediel. <laughs> And Abdiel's like, like he doesn't even care. Like, right. like old Abdiel, like beginning of the movie, Abdiel was right. like, it's Abdiel, right? He's like, <laughs> he doesn't need to explain himself. To the, he doesn't need to, 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 you know, like prove anything to these guys. No, you know? no. Yeah. He just turns his back and all you see is, you know, the back of his, 
his you know football jacket. <laughs> it's got little angel wings, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course. But yeah, so 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 yeah, it's so Abdiel threw the first punch, right? And and like the 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 Satan's army is freaked out, right? <laughs> um and then the trumpets ring out mm-hmm. and the war cries resound and the battle begins for real. Mm-hmm. And folks, you've seen Lord of the Rings, you've seen Game of Thrones. If Milton were alive today, he would probably compare it to those things. <laughs> it was like Game of Thrones. Right. Um but but he would be like, oh, it's even better than that. These armies are way bigger, both like number and actual size, and on land and in the air, right? Because mm-hmm. you know, and they can fly and they can use the elements. So like they're they're air bending and water bending also. <laughs> so yeah, so so just imagine that, right? right? And so yeah, the battle rages on for a long time. Neither side is letting up, and Milton assures us that Satan is no coward. He's mm-hmm. doing his bit. He is fighting alongside everyone else, and he's good. He's like mowing seraphim down left and right nobody can beat him nobody can touch him Mm -hmm. uh but like he is looking for someone in this crowd and eventually he finds him michael's over there chopping down whole squadrons with his huge double-handed swings of his sword and he looks up and they spot each other and it's like slow motion and the sound drops out and they share this look cut to like a wide shot they're like 50 feet apart (laughs) bodies piled up around michael and michael calls out and he says author of evil, unknown till thy revolt, unnamed in heaven, how plenteous as thou seest these acts of hateful strife, hateful to all, though heaviest by just measure of thyself and thy adherence. How hast thou disturbed heaven's blessed peace, and into nature brought misery, uncreated till the time of thy rebellion? How hast thou instilled thy malice into thousands, once upright and faithful, now proved false? But think not here to trouble holy rest. Heaven casts thee out from all her confines. Heaven, the seat of bliss, brooks not the works of violence and war. Hence then, an evil go with thee along thy offspring to the place of evil. Hell, thou and thy wicked crew, there mingle broils, ere this avenging sword begin thy doom. Or some more sudden vengeance, winged from God, precipitate thee with augmented pain. And so, yeah, so Satan answers. Nor think thou with wind of airy threats to awe whom yet with deeds thou canst not. Hast thou turned the least of these to flight, or if to fall, but that they rise unvanquished, easier to transact with me that thou shouldst hope, imperious, and with threats to chase me hence? Ere not that so shall end the strife which thou callst evil, but we style the strife of glory, which we mean to win." or turn this heaven itself into the hell thou fablest. Here, however, to dwell free, if not to reign, meanwhile thy utmost force, and join him named Almighty to thy aid. I fly not, but have sought thee far and nigh. Mm-hmm. Right. So, Michael is uh, calling Satan out, and Satan says he's not going to run away. Mm-hmm. He, was, he was searching specifically for Michael. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Keenan, who's, who's Michael? In this, right? Mm-hmm. Abdiel is the crowd favorite. We cast him as, you know, we cast Sean Astin. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's not a match for Satan. So <laughs> Michael has a special beef with him. Who do we cast? Oh, geez. So he's like, he's like spot on, like, like he doesn't mm-hmm. have kind of the, the weirdness of Raphael or, or, right. you know, right? So he's like, yeah, like stereotypical, like hero, hero. So he's like true blue, yeah. True yeah, blue, yeah. like a Denzel Washington, mm, Tom Cruise okay. sort of, uh, which do you yeah. like? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, like my mind first went to Tom Cruise, but like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm also thinking like, like maybe Matt Damon, someone like that. Oh, right? yes, 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 yes. Yeah, right. Like, I feel, I feel like he is young compared to Satan. I mean, he is, right? If Satan's right. the first angel, right? Mm-hmm. But like his actor would be younger than Satan's actor. <laughs> right. They're ageless, but they, yeah, they have to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. All right. We're going with Damon. I love Damon. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do Damon. And like, did we say like, um, we're thinking like David Bowie for Satan? <laughs> Oh, definitely. If we yeah, haven't, yeah, right. if we haven't said that yet, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Now I have to go back and read. It's like, it's like, wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Nor think thou with the wind of airy threats to all whom yet with deeds thou canst not. <laughs> but Raphael is, is the turtle, the, the big puppety turtle from the '90s movie, right? I thought Raphael was uh, George Takei. Oh, that's right. All right, that's fine. But he's George yeah, yeah. Takei, but he has that big puffy, you know, 1920s uh, 1990s blocky uh, uh, turtle costume. Okay, sure, sure. I'll, t- I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> but he sounds like George Takei. <laughs> oh, oh, Raphael dressed as Raphael from the Turtles. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Ah, absolutely. okay, okay, okay. I like this. All right, I like it. Okay, let's take George Takei out of it. Let's. We gotta. We gotta put him somewhere, right? <laughs> no, no. He could still be George Takei's voice in what? that giant. In that giant get up. We should. We should make him the voice of God. Yeah, I think that's what we've been wanting to do. Yeah, I but, think you're right. But this God 
like I like George Decay more than this god. <laughs> Milton's god. Let me be let me right. be clear here. Right. He'll take whatever yeah. roles he can. He's, he's, he's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe maybe that'll make make um Milton's god a little bit more palatable. All right. So yeah. So so we got uh, we got uh, um, Satan and Michael and uh, you know. Um, they're the, they're the um the two main characters as the as the kids say today right <laughs> um and uh, they're circling each other and Milton likens them to planets or constellations getting ready to fight each other and they rush at each other and man this is the anime episode I guess right this is Milton's anime book <laughs> over here mm-hmm. um his his manga um <laughs> because the way he writes it it really is slow motion because of how many words he devotes to this moment right <laughs> mm-hmm. it's it's that classic like image when when they like rush at each other and there's like a flash and now they've like passed each other and so they're <laughs> so they're like they're like back to back right and you see like it's it's like completely unchanged but then you see the top half of satan's sword <laughs> fall to the ground <laughs> And then you see half of Satan's body <laughs> also fall to the ground. And but, it's no joke. Like, like that's what it is. But also, also like, like anime, like, um, I didn't watch Dragon Ball Z as a kid. My brother, uh-huh. my brother would watch it because yeah. I'd come home from school and it seems like every single day they would, they'd be on either sides of a cliff, right? Yeah. And they'd just be, they'd just be talking like smack to each other. <laughs> and they'd be like, we'll find out what happened next time on Dragon Ball. And then you yeah. come back the next time and they're still on that cliff and they're still just talking smack to each other. And like, when is uh-huh. anything going to happen? Mm-hmm, That's my mm-hmm. major recollection of that show. Yeah, yeah. But now you're saying that, that Satan actually does fall in half? Okay, so because I, again, I have, I have some yeah. trouble reading. reading yeah, this, so. well, I, I, I am too. And I'm, I'm reading like several different versions, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it's unclear whether he's been split in two <laughs> or, or or whether he just has like a huge gash running down the middle of him. Right. Like he's split in two. Like he's split in two, right? Because <laughs> Milton says it's so deep mm-hmm. that the wound can't close. And he's like, oh, usually angels, like they heal really, really quick. So uh-huh. you give them a cut and it's like, and it's like they're, they're back to normal, right? But this cut that Michael made is so deep that Satan's like, like, essence is bleeding out all over the place, his right? His nectarous humor. His, his nectarous humor, right? Like, is what angels have instead of blood, right? <laughs> um, and yeah, so so it's this, this, this airy substance that's, and that's what's pouring out of Satan, and it's all over his armor, mm-hmm. and like, he's, he's down, and the fallen angels rush to help him, and they pick him up, and they bring him back to his chariot, and they lay him out, and he's like thrashing in pain, and he's, mm. he's got to like sit part of the battle out, but Milton assures us, that he'll like eventually heal up and get back out there because angels heal really fast, like he mm-hmm. said. And more painful to Satan is just like the shame of being beaten. Uh huh. Right. Um, and I think that was the first time he'd been hit. Actually, probably like, the first time that Abdiel hit him is the first time he's bled or anything, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. right. Let alone now with the fucking double-handed sword thing that from, Michael does from Michael. Yeah. After yeah. a real, you know, tough talking to. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, so so like like he he'd been like other than other than Abdiel's like punch right mm-hmm. before he he runs up against Michael like he's been going you know through this whole thing without a scratch mm-hmm. is is what it sounds like Milton is saying right um and then Michael breaks his sword and slices him in two um <laughs> or or as if he were slicing as two, if he were sliced in two yeah right uh yeah I I can't make heads or tails of what this sentence is saying well, neither neither can Satan because he's <laughs> no. no. Uh, yet soon he healed for spirits that live throughout vital in every part, not as frail man and entrails, heart or head, liver or reins, cannot yeah. but by annihilating die. Which, you know, sounds like bloody organs to me. So I, I, that's, that's all I get. But I don't know what mm-hmm. it's actually proposing. Well, he's, saying, he's saying he's saying they're without those things. They don't have entrails. Yeah, I yeah. guess he just has goo in him, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He just has this like mana nectar goo, like whatever they eat just stays in there. Yeah, right. You hear that, Milton? <laughs> It just stays in there. It doesn't go anywhere. You wrote that in this book. But okay, like actually, I want to I want to talk about this this confrontation um, mm-hmm. a little bit more um, because when I was in college, like I I read this for real the first time. Right? Remember, I lied and I said right. I did it in, in high school. Right. But like I actually read it in college, and I swear, I thought Michael had only like nicked him a little Mm -hmm. and the whole point of this passage was almost a joke like satan couldn't believe that someone like actually hurt him Mm -hmm. and like the angels come and carry him back to his chariot and the whole time he's just like ow 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 oh oh the pain oh 
Like I thought that was what it is. And you know, and Michael's just standing there like, what? Right. Like, uh, uh. But no, like, I guess, I guess I read it wrong. He gets like sliced up, but. <laughs> he has to sit out. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it, it's, it's like um, when Cartman is challenging Kyle to a fight <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to fucking kick your ass, Kyle. This is it. This is going to And then Kyle like, like, the, and then, you know, they're like, what? Second graders or third graders. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Kyle like, you know, hits him. And then yeah, Cartman yeah. just like. Yeah. <laughs> like a child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I really like that in South Park when they remind us that okay, these are like you that know, they're kids. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're avatars for these forty or fifty year old men who are writing them. But yeah, they're, they're sure. actually kids. <laughs> right, right, right. I like. I mean, like, I, like we're joking about it. Like that's a comedy bit for for Satan to be like like super like overly dramatic, mm-hmm. but it also kind of fits with the character that Milton wrote. Yeah. Like, can you imagine? It's like, you hit me. <laughs> no one's supposed to hit me. <laughs> right. If you were a Jim Carrey character instead of a David Bowie character, yeah. That's exactly right, what yeah. <laughs> no. But it's like, um. oh, now I'm going to bring up The Simpsons. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's like Nelson being like, you made me bleed my own blood. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> Usually I got, like, other people's blood on me. <laughs> right. So yeah, so so whatever. Ha- yeah, like he's 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 put out of commission for like a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, the battle continues to rage, and we get some little vignettes with different characters that we knew from previous books. We got mm-hmm. Gabriel going up against Moloch, mm-hmm. right? And Gabriel also splits Moloch quote to the waist again, huh? Another one. I like not not sure if this is like horizontal or vertical. Um, <laughs> okay. but Moloch runs away, bellowing, so he must still be in one piece, right? <laughs> he must have both legs. Um. He might, just, uh, we, he might just be legs. We don't know. Oh yeah, right. It could be. Could it could? It's either it's either just a pair of legs running away, or it's like two halves like hopping away. <laughs> right. I do like Moloch as a character. You know, even though he's like maybe the worst of the demons because he oh yeah eats yeah. children. Uh-huh, <laughs> but uh-huh. yeah, I just I, I like him in here, just getting, uh-huh. getting his ass handed to him. Right. His his big old cow head and yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a cow oven thing that you feed children into. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. Um, and we got uh, Uriel and Raphael going up against uh, Adremelech and Asmodeus, or Asmodeus, right, mm-hmm. you know, from our Testament of Solomon episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, but they get sliced up just like the rest, and they run away. Um, and we get a shot of Abdiel, and he's still fighting. And he takes down Ariel, Arioch, and Ramiel. Mm. Um, you know, just slice, slice, slice. Uh, <laughs> so those are other fallen angels. And after this, Raphael slash Milton is like, I could go on. These feats are so great and so numerous, but uh, angels care not for human praise and demons don't deserve it. So so trust me, it's, it was all really epic. Yeah, I guess you just reminded me, right? This is all being told to Adam and Eve for some reason. Yes, by um, uh, Raphael. Yeah. Right? So like this one angel who you will never meet, <laughs> and it doesn't matter. Like he was super cool and he killed this devil and this devil and this devil who you also never meet. And this yeah. is not the point of the story. And this right. is really urgent that I tell you this story. God yes. has set me down. <laughs> we don't have much time. We don't have much time. <laughs> Did I get to the angel circulatory system <laughs> yet? No. Ah. But yeah, so so Satan's army is losing. They are beginning this clumsy retreat, uh, but then night falls and it brings a quote grateful truce. And God's army sets up tents to like retire for the night. And meanwhile, in Satan's camp, he calls a council. He's 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 all about calling those councils. Right. Um and he's like, okay, now. Guys, we're, we're battle-tested. We fought against heaven's greatest warriors today, but they didn't break our spirits. Both literally and fi- like, did you guys notice? Like, we can't actually break. Like, isn't this great? Um, we'll go back out there tomorrow, you know, with stronger armor and w- with better weapons, and we'll we'll win this thing. Mm. And, and Beelzebub, or whoever he was named before, right, was right. like, but my companion dear, your goo. <laughs> <laughs> we must protect your sweet, sweet goo inside. And I can tell <laughs> And like this is like I'm I'm seeing the shot as a good, not that shot <laughs> the, the goo shot no <laughs> I'm seeing the camera mm-hmm. you know and it's it's got a close you know like like um Satan is is at the the war table <laughs> and it's just it's just like Beelzebub's hand on his shoulder and he and he puts his hand over Beelzebub's hand <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and he's like let us not concern ourselves with goo until <laughs> until this battle's won I'd spill every ounce of my goo for you companion I, dear. I mean, it's like, right. it was Tuesday night. I, <laughs> I'd die a thousand times to get you a slightly bigger house. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that's their torture is that they get a really small house in hell. Yeah. <laughs> they got to shrink down. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but no, Beelzebub's not here. Well, he's. This is weird. Yeah, I know. I know. It's it's like Milton. Milton's holding back from what it actually is. And then every time we see Beelzebub, mm-hmm. there's something going on there. But. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't yeah, have. So we don't know. We don't learn his name before he right. fell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See this. I'll tell you the censorship by, um, <laughs> by Milton. <laughs> But yeah, so so okay, so so Satan well, I mean, finishes, I mean, this well, is yeah. the, this is the time period where they were, um, you know, canceling Christmas for censorship, right? I mean, oh yeah, yeah, Milton, yeah, right, right. Milton lived through Milton lived through Cromwell canceling Christmas for being, yep. uh, yeah, and people would get thrown in jail for secretly celebrating Christmas. Yeah, so yeah. let alone yeah, yeah, some Beelzebub, <laughs> some Beelzebub right. shipping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, folks, canceling Christmas. You thought you thought that was only in the Rankin Bass movie. <laughs> No, it was Cromwell coming in. <laughs> Christmas yep. is canceled this year. <laughs> yep, and it was. There's no. There's no happy ending to that, folks. It's, yeah. So yeah. So so Satan has finished his speech. He's like, I feel good about this. Mm-hmm. You know, we're we're battle tested. You know, we all healed up, so we're good, right. right? And so he sits down, and up stands Nisroch, whom we've never met. Oh, Nisroch is. Thank, thank um, you for yeah clarifying that because I yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. like, what the hell is this? <laughs> no, I no. missed something. Okay. No. But he's he's a he's a Mesopotamian god, like you know, uh, like oh. Pazuzu, um, and he's got an eagle's head. Oh. Um, but uh, the texts on him are like the Mesopotamian texts are very very sparse, mm-hmm. and he's actually more famous as a fallen angel in Christian and Jewish demonology. Mm. Um, probably Milton had something to do with that, making him a character here. Right. Um, but yeah, so 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 Nisroch basically stands up and he says. You didn't tell us about pain. That's a very good question. <laughs> Why didn't you tell us about that, Satan? Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, I think, I think if I'm reading this right, the good angels are not feeling pain. Mm-hmm. Unless Nisroch is exaggerating here. Like, like he's saying, like, it's as if the good angels are immune to pain and fatigue, right? I think, oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Right. That, like, you, you being loyal to God, like, um, like, immunes you to, to pain. Yeah. Right. I think earlier Milton also hinted that the good angels were like still hale and hearty by the mm-hmm. end of the day because they didn't have the weight of their sins weighing them down. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, like like Milton with his literal figurative, I don't know. <laughs> uh, is this going to come up later? So this says I'm at the demonic paradise wikia. Yeah. Yeah. Nisroch, also known as Nick Nisroch, that's not helpful, is a fallen angel who became Hell's master of cuisine and Beelzebub's personal chef. What? Am I? I guess I don't know where what, what side I'm on. <laughs> this is the this is the demonic paradise wiki that you read from before. Yeah, like, maybe this is like not a reputable Abdiel. source. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, actually, if you if you uh, just image search for Nisroch. Yeah, half of them are this uh, eagle-headed guy you're talking about, and a lot of them are like mm-hmm. you know profile shots of what looks like Assyrian murals, right? But then the other it's half, very Pazuzu looking. Yeah, 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 because they're probably related. They're probably like in the same family tree, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then like the other half are like little a, a little devil guy with a chef's hat on. What? I don't know. I don't know what I've stumbled upon. <laughs> is this this has got to be like some kind of like. <laughs> It's it, some kind of popular franchise <laughs> that, that, has taken Nisroch's name. That I'm just not familiar with, yeah. It's gotta be, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's what this is. That, like, Milton took his name out of obscurity and, and, and made him into a demon, so, yeah. I don't know why he's a chef, but he is, I guess. Well, maybe I didn't read this, <laughs> like, thoroughly enough <laughs> back in college. And we don't know, Keenan. right. Maybe there's maybe there's like a you know what you know what it was mm-hmm. Keenan I got to the end of uh, of book twelve mm-hmm. and there were just credits and I didn't stay for the credits <laughs> when, he, when he goes hey I'm making you a spicy pizza pie yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know everyone's rejoicing and then you know and then you know the, the the credits and the publisher and blah 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 and you know copyright you know it rolls and then. And it's like, meanwhile, down in hell, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I'm finding all sorts of places where it says he is essentially the head chef of hell. So I don't know. Like, where. like in what I show? I don't know. I don't know. Because it has to be a show or something. I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> is he in Good Omens? Is that what this is? <laughs> and, and, uh, and now and now we pass it along to you, dear listeners. Yep. Yep. Figure it out. Where <laughs> where is where is Nisroch a chef? <laughs> in hell. Yeah. In, well, no. I, <laughs> I mean, like, like what? 
what universe? Because I want to. I want universe, right? Exactly, right. Let us know, folks, because I'll, I'll watch that, whatever it is. <laughs> oh yeah. So, so yeah. In any case, Nizrock says if anyone can invent a weapon to help them win, he'll be forever in their debt. Mm-hmm. And so here, Satan says that thing you describe already exists. And he says that under their feet, just under the surface, all the elements are waiting to be dug up and mixed into explosive powder. And yeah, guys, he's talking about gunpowder. And he goes on to describe how they're going to make this powder, pack it into these hollow machines, long and round, and then light a fuse. And you realize he's talking about cannons to them. Mm -hmm. And this is a part that critics say is a little ridiculous, Satan inventing cannons. But but like I actually do like no, 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 no. I like how Milton gave him this little character trait where like everybody else in heaven is happy to just look at the flowers and the greenery mm-hmm. on the on the surface of of heaven's, you know, earth. Right. Um, but like you get a sense that that he's like curious and he's dug under the earth and he's found all these elements and these minerals and he's observed how they react with each other, right? So so he Satan is looking at nature um and rather than admiring it, he's seeing how it can be twisted and manipulated to serve him. Mm-hmm. And I like that. I do like that. Um and I like that um he's the one who knows this stuff. Like would have been nice if he'd have told them about this before the first day of fighting. Mm-hmm. Um but I also think that that also fits with Satan's character. He wants to put on a show. Right. Yeah. He probably didn't even think they needed the cannons. Right. He's that he's he's cocky. Right. Right. But now he gets to show off his his evil ingenuity. Um, And this also reminds me of a line from The Hobbit um, when we first meet the goblins. Uh, And Tolkien, Tolkien says, quote, goblins are cruel, wicked and bad hearted. They make no beautiful things, but they make many clever ones. Hammers, axes, swords, daggers, pickaxes, tongs, and also instruments of torture they make very well, or get other people to make to their design. It is not unlikely that they invented some of the machines that have since troubled the world, especially the ingenious devices for killing large numbers of people at once, mm-hmm. for wheels and engines and explosions always delighted them. Mm-hmm. End quote. Now, well, I don't know The Hobbit very well. I haven't read it, but, ah. but that's interesting. So Tolkien is like... Okay, so we have this stuff that is like the advanced weapons of war that might bother me in the time period I'm writing about, and so I'm right. but I'm blaming it on on goblins. Yes, Milton is doing something similar, but blaming it on Satan, and then Satan yes. has passed that on to humankind, I suppose, through sin. Right. So, well, like, like passed it on, like because he introduces Raphael... them to sin, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. And and Raphael actually like he he stops his narrative just to say it's like, and maybe one day, Adam, you know, one of your your offspring will like invent something very similar. Hmm. Yeah. So like like a very very heavy wink mm-hmm. right there. It's like cannons, cannons. You know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So so that that's that's the idea, right? Like they 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 all uh, love this idea, so they they all uh, set to work, right? All night making gunpowder and cannons. Mm-hmm. And the next morning, God's army is standing at attention, but Satan's army is nowhere to be seen. And and then an angel named Zephiel. Uh, spots them coming up the field and he warns everybody and now everybody can see Satan's army and they're marching in this like really weird formation Mm -hmm. um, where it looks like they're like hiding something in the midst of their ranks and so they stop and they face each other and then Satan tells the front rank to split apart and now the good angels are, are seeing what looks like pillars on wheels and they're like what the f and then the cannons just fire into the midst of all of them and scatter them like bowling pins. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just, it just blows a huge uh, hole in their army. And now um, it's just like confusion and chaos and they're trying to regroup. But, mm-hmm. but every time they get bombarded again and, and because their armor is actually weighing them down and they can't like dodge or fly fast enough to avoid uh, the attacks, they're, they're getting hit even more. Mm-hmm. Um, and now Satan is, is mocking them. He's like, ah, oh, do you see this fellas? We, we gave them our, our peace terms and they're, they're so happy they're dancing. <laughs> And and Belial, remember remember him, folks. He starts like yes anding Satan, and he's like he's like yeah, boss. Uh, th- th- that's because these terms are are weighty with solid statements, mm-hmm. and they're rammed home with full force, right? <laughs> and another demon's like yeah, it looks like looks like they're having a blast. <laughs> and then Howdy speaks up, and he's like yeah, and that's canon. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing things at him. <laughs> Boo. Right. What? What? <laughs> Uh, we were all having a good time, and then he ruined it. I know. 
But yeah, so so looks like Satan's army is going to win this one. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the good angels get an idea. They throw down their weapons and they run for the hills. Mm-hmm. No, like like literally they run for the hills and they they pick up the hills <laughs> and the mountains. <laughs> And and they fly back in the direction of the battle. And, and he's like cut to Satan and his boys laughing. You know, it's a close up on Satan's face and like a huge shadow passes over his face. And he looks up and he sees flying mountains. <laughs> like, hey, where did the mountains go, Davey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so, so, so the angels just drop the mountains on top of Satan and his army, smashing the cannons and them. <laughs> and Milton again makes a comment about like their armor, like saying that like if they hadn't been wearing it, they would have like it would have like hurt less because you know they're made of light, so they would just like squished a little bit. But now so they're if they, trapped. If they hadn't been at war, they they wouldn't have gotten hurt. Uh, yeah, basically. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> but now they, they got this. <laughs> this rock is like another thing you, you forgot to tell us. <laughs> this war thing has consequences. <laughs> But yeah, so now they're they're like like crushed under the mountains, trapped inside their armor, um, and apparently it's really really painful. <laughs> He's here, Nisrock, under right. Could have told us. Yeah. Yesterday. <laughs> I like I like that he's that his voice, um, reflects no pain at all. It's just <laughs> it's just a paw. It's just like you know, it's a cartoon, just like like mountain drops on him, and then you just hear it's like. And another thing. <laughs> he's just he's just tired of it. Right. He's just, yeah. No pizza for you. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's just well, back to the drawing board. <laughs> he's that guy right. in Satan's crew. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, folks, that's the end of the cannons. Um <laughs> that's it. So we had why, all that time. So why did man go and invent cannons if they're so bad, if they didn't didn't work? Well, well no, they like they don't have to worry about mountains being thrown on them. <laughs> we can make cannons. It's fine. You know? Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. But, okay, so so the fallen angels regroup, and now they're picking up mountains and throwing them. And it's, a, and it's like, I just imagine, like, somebody in the, in the middle, no, it, it's Howdy for sure. He's like, mountain fight! <laughs> Before he gets decked with a mountain. Right. right? A little mountain, but yeah. Or he, right. just, he just runs away and watches from the hills as he eats. Oh, yeah, of course. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's his jam. Um, well, thanks for explaining that. I didn't pick up on any of that from yeah. this inscrutable. Yeah, did you, did you catch it, folks? <laughs> They're tossing mountains at each other, right? Or is it actually a mountain fight? Like, I feel I feel like this is another, like, part where, like, apologists <laughs> would, would be like, oh, well, you know, <laughs> like, like, we see Adam and Eve through Satan's eyes, so the sexism isn't Milton, it's Satan. And now they can be like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, throwing mountains at each other would be ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. But, like, Raphael's trying to, like, explain this thing to Adam, and, and that's the best he can do. It's not actual mountains. From the... Sorry to do this live on air, everybody. But okay. <laughs> From their foundations loosening to and fro, they plucked the seated hills with all their load, rocks, waters, woods, and by the shaggy tops uplifting bore them in their hands. Yeah, I guess yeah. I guess they throw them out. <laughs> it's a mountain fight. I guess yeah. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But yeah, as uh, as this is going on, we cut to God <laughs> and he's watching it all from his throne <laughs> and the sun's there mm-hmm. and he says to the sun, he's like, "Okay. It's been 2 days, um, but I've been saving the victory for you." So he's like, "Go out there with all my weapons, my bow, my thunder, my chariot and drive these rebels out of heaven and then return to me." Mm-hmm. Which how do we feel about this, Keenan? God's been holding back the sun <laughs> as a secret weapon this whole time. He's he's aware that there will be no end to this fight because both sides are immortal. And now he's like, get out there and finish it. Yeah, I don't understand. It feels prideful to me, doesn't it? Yeah. Doesn't it feel like, okay, well, we can't let the angels do this. Like we, you and I have to do this. Like It feels out of character for right. what I understand of the Christian God. Yeah, right? I mean, it's like basically all of Milton's God feels out of character. <laughs> yeah. For me, like this this is just more proof mm-hmm. that Milton is the wrong person to try to justify God mm-hmm. because whenever his God character shows up, he does and says stuff that is unjustifiable, mm-hmm. right? Like he knows the war, like like he's, he's letting the war continue. Mm-hmm. He's like a cat with a mouse, <laughs> you know? And I, and I know it's because... Milton is so hung up on the fact that his God has to be 
perfect. Nothing surprises him. Nothing phases him. There's never like a question that he might lose or or falter mm-hmm. at any point, right. right? But then that infallibility makes all of his actions cruel. Mm-hmm. Like if he knows the battle is going to go on forever and he's saving the victory for his son, right. which is an extension of him, mm-hmm. and he waits for two days, mm-hmm. like why? Right. And again, like Milton's trying to justify, to explain God to us, and he's butting up against the problem of evil because his version of God in this day and age has to be all powerful, all knowing, and all good, mm-hmm. right? And Milton leans so heavily on the all powerful and all knowing parts. I feel like the all good takes a hit but with but not consciously no no no, no. He, i don't i don't he's, think he thinks he's still doing the all good part yes yeah yeah he's not he's I, not like writing this character and saying like look look this is this is the this is the downside of being god he, no, he's no, no, not no. all I, good yeah yeah no i think i think i think he's saying to everybody and maybe he thinks it mm-hmm. that like god is his favorite character in this mm-hmm. yeah but i think we know who his favorite character is <laughs> that's actually that's actually um william that's a william blake line uh-huh. william blake said that uh milton was a member of the devil's party without knowing it <laughs> i like that yeah right yeah cuz so, blake yeah. loves the devil clearly in his uh, oh his yeah, oh, yeah, yeah 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 it takes one to know one you know <laughs> right blake's devil looks like harpo marx but adam and eve look like zeppo and gummo i mean you know yeah 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 <laughs> and, and let's be fair like blake's satan looks like harpo marx if Harpo Marx went to the gym every fucking day <laughs> and ate nothing but like cakes of protein. <laughs> I've never seen Harpo Marx with his shirt off and he might have been, they might, you know, they might have been oh, ripped. I mean, all the stuff they had to do. Right. All the like, acrobatics. Yeah. There's stuff, yeah, one yeah. movie where um, Buster Keaton takes his uh, shirt off to go swimming uh-huh. and he's like, bazam. He's like, whoa. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe you wouldn't be like bazam. I'm sure he's not well, as buff as you, but. Uh, well. <laughs> well, I'm not as funny as him, so, you know. <laughs> trying to meet that person you know it's like hey that's that's the angle i'm trying to work right you know it's like it's like be funny and uh you know and, and look pretty right. you know yeah. but yeah so yeah back to to milton's god like like i mean you know we're, we're doing this this poem for a reason mm-hmm. folks right it's like i love the epicness of this story i think his version of satan is groundbreaking in its like complexity and nuance like so, so great job with that right mm-hmm. but if the purpose really is to make us understand God better and side with God, mm-hmm. I think Milton is failing so far. Uh-huh. Yeah, at least for me. Like, I, I don't see God in this character. I see Milton, hmm. right? I see Milton trying his best to explain something he doesn't understand. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like the uncanny valley of God. <laughs> the, like, the more, the more you understand of him, the less you understand of him. <laughs> right. The, the, the closer he tries to get to, like, biblical God. Right. The farther he gets away from human, and you're just like, Ugh, you know. yeah, I, yeah, I don't know if this brings me closer to understanding God. It makes me closer to understanding Abdiel and Raphael uh-huh. and uh, uh-huh. um, even Eve and, against his will. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, sympathizing with Eve, but yeah, and certainly Satan, obviously, and certainly, okay, certainly, yeah, certainly yeah. Satan, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Also, also, he's messing with the story. Mm-hmm. It's Michael who casts Satan out of heaven. Like that, that's and that's not just like the lore surrounding Michael. That's considered canon in Christian theology. Mm. And Milton's taken more liberties here. He he lets Satan and Michael fight, so mm-hmm. so Satan can like uh, temporarily wound him mm-hmm. um, to goo him, then, as they would to say. goo him. Yeah. <laughs> and then he has the sun come out and and finish the battle. Mm-hmm. Keenan, like you wondered in our last Paradise Lost episode, how religious Milton was. <laughs> And and like you joked that it was like, you know, maybe a silly question mm-hmm. since we're like reading Paradise Lost. But no, no, there are points when it feels like Milton is not of this religion. Mm. He's like, oh, this is a cool list of characters for me to play with. Yeah, sure. And he's just like adding and subtracting stuff, moving it around, trying to explain like geography in heaven mm-hmm. and and the, the, the physiology of angels. And it feels like... He doesn't know or he doesn't care that he's playing with scripture. Right. He's, mm-hmm. he's treating it like mythology, like like he were writing about Zeus and Hades, <laughs> like a dead mythology that like he can play with. That's what it feels like. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know if religious is the right question of what I was trying to ask, but I guess like reverent, right? Like how much is he? Yeah. Um, I guess from a from a, a negative connotation would be like how dogmatic is he? But like, mm-hmm. yeah, like how, how reverent is he to the tenets of Anglicanism and what they're right. teaching him? Uh, you know, like... Um, uh jefferson right like we, we debate right. about like how reverent or how religious jefferson was he spent a lot of time with the bible um yeah. uh he wrote his own bible he took his own yeah. he took the bible and took out all the magic mm. do you know about this yeah. wait 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 what 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. The Jefferson Bible is he rewrote the Bible to take out all the miracles just to make it uh, just to fit with his idea of like deism of like, um, you know, God existed and did the, and did the creation of the earth and then set it forward. Huh. And so like, yeah, for him, he probably feels like, oh, no, I'm I'm religious. Right. He still sees God as being the center of the universe and, and yeah. the creator and then writes in his political treatises about like it's, you know, man's man's um, responsibility to uphold what, what God has given man. Right. Oh. But like, yeah, other people would be like, well, that's sacrilegious or that's that's uh, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, yeah, like in in our like brief, admittedly brief dip Mm -hmm. into like Milton's bio, we didn't read anything about him being in trouble with the church, did we? Not like he was in trouble with the king. He was in trouble with the king. Oh yes. <laughs> in trouble with the king. Yeah. And then he disappears during the Cromwell age where where Cromwell runs the country and yeah, bans right. Christmas and that kind of thing. Like like yeah. he tries not to be in public life for that time period, it seems like, except yeah. for like being against the king. Like hooray, right. we we destroyed the king, etc. But there's not a whole lot to keep arguing for. Yeah. yeah. As I understand it. Yeah. We're just chuckleheads. Yep. Yep. Just two chuckleheads with a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, okay, like in, in any case, like with the dawn of mm-hmm. the third day, we see the sun riding forth in God's chariot, surrounded by four cherubim, mm-hmm. each with four faces. Um, their bodies and their wings are covered with eyes. Mm-hmm. This is the, the like we were getting that, you know, the biblically accurate angel memes here. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is surrounded by light and accompanied by 10 million saints. Mm-hmm. And he has a bow and a quiver full of thunderbolts. This is like this. This is straight out of a uh, Greek mythology here. <laughs> um, and and when God's army sees him, they all stop and they stand aside and they let him through. And even the mountains, like all, go back to their original places. And everything is like fixing itself as he passes. Right. Mm-hmm. And Satan's army sees and they are scared, but they don't back down. And the sun comes to a halt at the head of the army, and he speaks and he tells all the good angels to stand down it's him they want and they only measure things by strength and they ignore and they ignore all those other virtues so so angels are too virtuous uh for them to to even understand so Mm -hmm. you know so so they want strength he's gonna give them strength Mm -hmm. right and then he faces the rebel angels and his whole countenance changes and he becomes like instantly scary Mm -hmm. right so and you like you imagine like you know the devil is synonymous with scary like he is you know like you know the prince of, of of darkness and everything like that oh yeah but if he's the prince of darkness, right? It's like what's what's scarier than God being scary, right? <laughs> so, so wait, 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 are we are we being blasphemous? You're saying the, I don't know, the king I don't know. of darkness is, and then we're not going to finish that sentence. Yeah, hey, I'm I'm just I'm, no 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 no. I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm just trying to drive home mm-hmm. like how much scarier mm-hmm. an angry God is compared to an angry devil. Right. Um, so, and, and uh, Milton says he is too terrible to even look upon, right? And he rushes into the midst of them and they immediately lose all their resistance, like all mm-hmm. courage, all sense, right? It's just chaos. He's 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 rolling over them, mowing them down with thunderbolts and and like the many faces and the many eyes of the, the cherubim, they're all shooting fire. Mm-hmm. And, and Milton says the rebel angels wished that the mountains were back on top of them <laughs> because it would give them shelter from the sun's wrath. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm still trying to figure out this mountain thing, so... This is, this is earlier, so it's, it's literally mountains. <laughs> it's actual mountains. So hills amid the air and countered hills hurled yes. to and fro ejaculation dire. I do like that word. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ejaculation. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then yeah, so yeah, if hills are hitting hills in the middle of the air, yes, that's that's yep. mountains being thrown. Okay. All I right. Anyway, so I think I'm catching up. <laughs> where, where are we? <laughs> What's happening? Oh, the battle's over. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, well, well. <laughs> the sun won the war. Not not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay. So, but yeah. there's ten thousand. Wait, there's ten million saints. Yes. And they the, go marching in. <laughs> the devil had taken a te- a third of the total. Yes. So God, do I need to draw a ratio? And by saints, here? I think by saints, I think he means angels. Yeah, that's because obviously, right? yeah, yeah. So ten million over here, ten million uh-huh. over over X. The devil has taken a third of them. So ten is two thirds. Uh-huh. Ten is two thirds of X. <laughs> ten is so. What is that? There's fifteen million angels, like including the uh, including the, the, fallen, the, the ones? fallen ones. Does that sound right? I guess. Because it's sure. so, so it's 15 to begin with. Uh-huh. Satan takes a third of them, which would be five, five million. And then they have 10. All right. Did we solve we this math? We, we got it. Is folks. that helpful at all? Now. <laughs> You're just going to continue on. I asked you a direct question. Is don't put your protractor away. How many of them can dance on the head of a pin? <laughs>
No, that doesn't help us at all. Oh, no, thanks, thanks. I yeah. did all that on air math. I I wasn't going to stop you. you know. <laughs> I knew it was it was going to play out, but um, much like Milton's God, I was just like, oh, huh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let him get to the end of it. Yeah. Great. But yeah. All right, war's over, right? Well, no, no, no. Oh, jeez. Because <laughs> it turns out, Keenan, mm-hmm. the sun wasn't even using half of his strength. <laughs> No, I am not it. kidding. I am not kidding. <laughs> His strength is over nine thousand, as I understand it. Uh, yes, right, <laughs> way over. Um, so, so like the the point is like he's he's not trying to destroy them. He wants to round them up and, mm-hmm. and rout them, right? Um, so so like he chases them to the edge of heaven, and um, you know they they look over the edge and they see the Gulf of Chaos, and and way far down, like uh, at the bottom, they see the fiery Gulf of Hell. Um. And it's opened to like swallow them up and they all back away from the edge. But then they turn and Milton says that the sun was even scarier than hell. Mm -hmm. So they all like threw themselves off the cliff of heaven into chaos to escape the sun. And here Milton characterizes hell. He personifies hell. He says that hell heard the angels screaming and hell itself would have fled if it could. But instead it opened its mouth and swallowed them all. Ah, that's interesting. I see. So... So the monstrous sight of, of the sun, I guess, struck them with horror backwards, but far worse urged them behind. Headlong yeah. themselves, they threw down from the verge of heaven. Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, yeah. Because, yes, as um, as I've been reading about, about this, a lot of critics will point out that, like, there is a, in Paradise Lost, there is a choice to fall. Yes. Yeah. So here we have the uh, the devils, the demons, also choosing to fall. Yes. Yes, I like that a whole lot. Um, mm-hmm. And so apparently, there's like this this uh, motif of of standing being the opposite of falling um, mm-hmm. that that I was told to keep looking. <laughs> I was told to keep looking for. And here, this oh, would be okay. an example of that, right? right so they perfect. they are yeah. weak. So rather than like standing up to the sun and like accepting their fate, they choose to right. fall, and that will happen with um, Adam and Eve as well. Yes. Yes. So cool. they, they hurl. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. See, <laughs> it only took six books, folks, but. <laughs> But then I am I am also questioning so like um God makes hell specifically for them, right? There's there's right. not so so he makes it just in time for them to see the choice, I suppose, is they're at the edge of heaven. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. He, yeah. he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, right. Right. He's got Doesn't have to, yeah. Um personify that with some some dog that comes out and, and is hell. Right. He's <laughs> yeah. got a little a little collar that says hell and then he goes and makes right. hell down there. No. Although he kinda does, because he says hell heard them coming and would have run away. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Never mind that. I think that's bad. Yeah. But then he just eats them. He swallows them up. He's like, oh. yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so the son returns in glory to the father and all of heaven rejoices. And that's where Raphael's tale ends. Right. So now we get the flash. It's, it's back to regular time. Uh-huh. Um, and this book finishes with him saying to Adam, it's like, there, you asked me and I did my best to tell this story. Mm-hmm. And... This is where, like, in the video game, like, it's an RPG. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, you're, like, um, scrolling through this this uh, this NPC's, like, explanation. Mm-hmm. And it gets to the very, very end. And and by the by now, you're just, like, so impatient. You're just click, 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 click. <laughs> but the last thing in this guy's, like, speech, um, mm-hmm. you know, file is, do you want me to repeat that? <laughs> And it's automatically set to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? So you have to be paying attention. That's how they make sure you read everything, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's no. just, so this, is, this whole story he started in the previous book. Yeah. And now it's, it's finishing. Okay. And now it's finished, Great. right? Um, so he says, there, you asked me, and I did my best to explain the tale. Now you know about Satan, mm-hmm. and now he's after you. So watch out. All right? Watch out for Satan. Watch out for Satan, right? <laughs> I mean, that one, that one, like, works. Yeah, people do that today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're watching out for Satan all the time. Uh-huh. <laughs> Nobody's watching out for Sharon. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how Sharon wins. Yeah. But yeah, folks, that is, that is the end of this book. Um, and uh, and that is the end of my notes. Uh, stay with us, and we're going to explore book seven in the next episode. Um, what's going to happen in book seven? I actually don't know. I've forgotten. Um, I know we're going to have to eat that fruit at some point, <laughs> but like we got 12 books, so yeah. it can't be yet. So something's going to happen in, in book seven. Hopefully. Hopefully something. Yeah. Or it's going to be like like Milton's Dragon Ball Z episodes. <laughs> Will Eve eat the fruit? <laughs> 
Find out next time on Paradise Lost. But not really in like three or four more episodes. Yeah, it's like, it's like a whole other season. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that is all of my notes. Keenan is there. All right, well, that was great. Thanks, past Lester and Keenan. Well, folks, I have been Lester Ryan Clark, both in the past and in the present. You can summon me on all the socials as Lester Ryan Clark. And I am immune to the bounds of time, and I've been Keenan Diaz, and you can invoke me on Instagram and Letterbox at Howdy Keenan. Yeah, find more of our shows and other really cool podcasts at True Story FM. Like us on Instagram and join our Facebook listener group, Dante's Ninth Circle Sushi and Karaoke Bar. Or feel free to drop us a message at thedevilsdetails at gmail.com. Wouldst thou like to live deliciously? We're not even asking for your souls. Just give us a five pentagram rating on iTunes or Spotify, or wherever you listen to our show. That and sharing the show by word of mouth or on social media helps our little podcast grow and find more cool people like you. All right, folks. Until next week, love and hisses. Mwah! is a reading of I Felt a Funeral in My Brain by Emily Dickinson. I felt a funeral in my brain and mourners to and fro kept treading, treading till it seemed that sense was breaking through. Emily! (laughs) (laughs) And when they all were (laughs) seated a service like a drum Kept beating, beating till I thought my mind was going numb. <laughs> she's the greatest American poet. Yeah. She, she's a prophet, a prophet of the, yeah. of the form. Really, really catchy poems. <laughs> Get to, get to jazz, do you know? Oh, and at the bottom of this poem, then you're supposed to select which starter Pokemon you have. Are you going yeah. with water? <laughs> water type, fire type, or, or grass type? <laughs> yeah. I go with water. You think we're joking, folks, but it's in there. Read some read some Ec- Emily Dickinson today. Yeah. And... Educate yourselves. Yeah, right. Ooh, I like this one. This one, this one, this one goes with our uh, with our show, mm-hmm. right? And this is I'm nobody. Who are you? By Emily Dickinson. I'm nobody, who are you? Are you nobody too? (laughs) Then there is a pair of us. Don't tell, they'll advertise, you know. What? (laughs) I don't know what you're reading. Why am I picking all the ones that don't fit? You make it work. I'm nobody, who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell, they'd banish us, you know. they banish us, you know. How dreary to be somebody. How public like a frog. To tell your name yeah. and live long day to unadmiring bog. To unadmiring bog. Okay, so that one's that one's a gilligan. Like a frog. Yes. <laughs> Again with this like a frog. See, Milton? Right out of here. <laughs> Emily gets it. <laughs> <laughs>